two star now, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that started, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the bunny rabbit, Mr. Mike Height. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've seen the badger tame, so. <laughs> Welcome, Mike. Good, good morning. <laughs> and that laugh, of course, is uh, Mayor Kevin Nels. Welcome, Kev. Good, good, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> and City Manager Andy Blake. Welcome, Andy. Good morning. <laughs> the only reasonable person around the table is Andy. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Hippity-hop, hippity-hop. Uh, <laughs> the bunny rabbit. I got more nicknames on this show. <laughs> well, it started with the Sarge, and then we moved to the Badger, the badger and then yeah. we saw you get tamed down there. And you're the bunny rabbit. Tamed, right? whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. <laughs> this is, this is the show of uh, nicknames, that's for sure. Right. Do you know what you're doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I got, I got, some, I got some feedback here. I'm try, trying to get for Colin to help me over here, but I think we're good. Sorry. What did I miss? We're good. No, we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> yeah. It's your sound on your phone. Man, yeah, my sound's not on. Yeah, it is. That's exactly. Yes, it there was. we go. Now that's better. Yeah, it was right, a sound, it was who's, a sound who's, on Mike's phone. Whose phone was that? Was that was Mike's phone. Uh, the, Feedback. I, sh I, should phone. I should not have been making fun of him. I apologize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin, tell us what's going on in the city. Well, as you know, uh, we did open up Lambert Pool. Uh, as promised, uh, and uh, we just talked to Joe Burton the other day, and he said the crowds are just filing in there. Wait, I think Andy said what r roughly about 300 a day that are, that are coming in on average through the summer. Yeah, and that's a, that's a that's a big deal. I mean, you know, we were we wanted to make sure that that part of town had an opportunity to to have those services there, and, and it's working very well, and it allows us to to look at the plans that we have possibly for the future for any type of new pool or any type of recreation up in that area. So it's it's real exciting. Well, with this heat, I'm sure. The, kid, you know, the uh, kids of, uh, or the families of the the southern part of, uh, or the northern part northern of Martinsburg, part. northern part of Martinsburg, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. Well, I, I would, hope, I would hope so, you know, because it took a lot of effort on, you know, it took a lot of effort on the community. It took an effort on uh, everybody else involved to make that happen, and and uh, you know, everybody st stood up and and worked really hard and diligent to make it happen, and you know, I can't. Credit the city hall enough, Andy and his his staff and everything that they've done to, to make that happen, and uh, CEC for the for the uh, engineering part of it. So I haven't been over there. Is the splash park a part of that, or is it just the pool that's open? Or is is, there is. It, is a splash park planned for the future? So right now it's just the existing pool that okay. was repaired. But the second prong of this is Lambert Pool is an older aging asset and infrastructure. Yeah is going to have to be replaced. So now that we have focused on repairing the pool, okay. um, the second prong was the council authorized a task order to start looking at a revisioning of what the Berkeley 2000 Center can be. Okay. And that, you know, that we've had preliminary conversations which has started to go into concept plans about uh, a new pool, possibly a splash pad component and other um, things. Um, including uh, some renovations of the existing Berkeley 2000 Center, perhaps to make it uh, flow a little bit better. If you've been over there, you can tell that you know it doesn't really have a main corridor that you can. You have to walk through one gym to get to another gym. So um, that's next on line. But is that a long-term kind of vision out, 10 years out, 15 years out, or is is, is that something you're, you're actively working on right now, Andy? Well, we're actively working on it. Actually, we've already placed uh, this uh, federal budget year a congressional earmark request um, for a new Lambert pool. So, oh, very good. Um, whether we haven't heard whether or not that's gone through the the budget process yet, we'll learn that in the fall. But that's something that we're actively working on as we speak. We could know you give us a timeline on something like that? When when could you expect to break ground, and how long do you think the the current pool could last if needed? Well, it, from what we understand and what our goals are is to hopefully have that pool 
up and operating uh, for the next five years, up to about five years. Okay. And, and during that period of time, be able to possibly put together, because uh, there's got to be funding mechanisms sure. for a big project like that. The city just doesn't have that kind of money laying around to be able to do that. So the federal uh, the federal funding will be a big help and be able to push things a little bit for, uh, faster, a little quicker. But I, I would imagine, you know, at least in, in my eyes, there's a, there's a five-year vision for something like that. How much money are we talking about, Kevin, for, for the new pool? I, I don't, um, we, we haven't got any pricing yet, have we? Uh, are we talking about $5 million? At least. twenty five. You're, you're, you're probably talking, to do it correctly, you're probably talking between 5 to $8 million yeah. to do a new pool. Uh, this is completely then that doesn't include the, uh, the 2000 outside. Center, right? Yes. If you were to renovate that, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, idea, the idea would be, and Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, during the existing pool while it's open, there's, there's a concept that we're looking at uh, building stuff in the back, getting that built while so there's no closure. If we, if we had to shut Lambert down uh, from last year to, and decide to start building, they'd be shut down for a good uh, two years for that. So sure. we're trying not to, to do that. So the concepts that we have is to allow to have uh, Lambert pool open while there's uh, the construction of whatever design we choose and pick to, to do on, on the back side of the building. We, we've spent a lot of time thinking about the pools, but there's other recreational pursuits as well, such as pickleball. Uh, what are you doing with pickleball? I know there's one court in Memorial Park that was there the other day, and a lot of people are enjoying it. So in partnership with uh, actually Berkeley County, it's on their land, parks and recreation in the city. The city council approved, and it's currently under construction, eight dedicated lighted pickleball courts over on Baltimore Street. Mm. Our hope and plan is to hopefully have those complete by the end of <laughs> August. Uh, once they put the uh, asphalt down, the asphalt has to cure for 30 days before you put the surfacing down or it'll just peel off. So so they're currently working on, on that now. And um, hopefully, like I say, August, uh, the pickleballers will have a new dedicated place to, to, to play pickleball. I know it's become a real trend. My wife's gotten into it. Um, <laughs> A lot. So, yeah. <laughs> and Mark Mark Baldwin, he's an avid uh, pickleballer now these days. So, it, yeah, I, I I joined the group last uh, uh, last week for one time, and I was impressed the number of people, the enthusiasm, and how much they were all enjoying it. Everybody's having such a great time. Well, Bill, that that sport has taken off like unbelievable. I it's, think it's uh, the fastest growing I think sport in the United States. If anybody would take credit for. Uh, Pickleball in this area probably be Rob Lowe, because I don't think I've ever I heard agree. of pickleball until I, <clears throat> until he told me a little bit about it, and then the Rotary had their first pickleball tournament. Next thing I know, you know, they're turning tennis courts into uh, uh, pickleball courts, and and people are looking for more and more. So we're, we're able to <clears throat> help supply that. There's other areas of recreation. Uh, we're looking at different places for a skate park. A skate uh, skate park is something that, that at least for me. Uh, I'm very, uh, very, um, I, I'm excited to be able to try to get something like that here in the city of Martinsburg. Yeah, they have sort of like a makeshift one over there on off of Raleigh Street. Um, so, but you're talking about a a, a yes. section made specifically for that, not not makeshift. Well, let me real quick talk about that, that one over sure. on, on Raleigh Street because... Uh, I've had an opportunity to, to work with these individuals and, and gone to a few events that they've had over there. And, boy, I'll tell you what, they keep that spotless over there. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they, they have their own guidelines, their own rules. There's no no issues at all. The, the only issue is that, that nobody owns that land. The one who owns that land can stop them from doing it. So the city does not own that land. The city does not own that land. And, and all of the, the work over there that has been done as far as, you know, the jumps and everything, they, they built themselves. If, if you have an opportunity, take, take a ride over there. Just walk through it. It's, a, it's amazing to see what the youth in, 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 this, in this community can do. To, to put together makeshift uh, opportunities. Do you know who owns that property? Uh, do you know who owns, owns that, Andy? I'm not, I'm not sure exactly. I know... Because uh, it would be cool to put the skate park right there, right next to EPTA, right? I, right think, across the road. I think the property recently transferred to a new <clears throat> property owner. Mm. I don't. I don't think in that. I, don't, I think the the idea that they had permission from the former, and they may gotcha. have permission from the, the new, but there's nothing that uh, has been talked about building one on there because it's going to be on private property. Right. I know that the city's not going to build something on the private property. 
So switching gears a little bit, I hear King Street's almost uh, ready, right? We're, we're King Street might be open by the time we get back to, to <laughs> City like, Hall. Oh, nice. It, it was supposed to be today, correct? It was actually yeah. supposed to be Monday, but believe it or not, we're ahead of schedule a little bit. So it's <laughs> new. Yeah, I know. Hold your fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's part of the interwoven monument, uh, $100 million plus project. Um, I think we've talked about it before that they had to install um, certain stormwater, and that was actually in cooperation of private. Actually, the state provided some funding mm -hmm. and the city provided some tax credits. Um, and that project actually captures about 67 acres of city stormwater as well. Some of that stormwater is going into the wastewater treatment plant um, currently, and that had to be removed from the wastewater treatment plant under our NPDES permit. So that was part of the project. And we very, 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 very much appreciate the patience, especially of the homeowners and the occupants uh, along King and Valley, because we know that that has been a very comprehensive, at times probably frustrating project. Uh, you know, King Street is probably the center for about every utility that can go, water, sewer, gas, electric, and um, it's required a lot of patience of the owners and, frankly, of the contractor. So we appreciate them very much. The project's not over. They'll now continue on. They're still working on Valley. They'll work on Porter. On Monday, they're going to call. Uh, going to close John Street. So that project will, will continue, but the actual main quarter of King will be open. And just to clear it up, we're not dumping stormwater into Lake Thomas. Because that, that, that's that been the question everybody's asking. They've seen the big uh, pipes that are down there right. and things like that. So there's a swale beside of Lake Thomas. It's a, the old historic overflow swale of Lake Thomas, and it goes into into that. Excellent. Then from, where, from the swale, where does it go, Andy? It continues to go. If you actually look at the watershed, it continues. It, it, it goes down past actually where the we were just talking about pickleball courts if, if you want to go down that far but um i'm not sure if it ever has gotten that far i could be wrong but um it gets into uh, the aquifer then yes Which, yeah yeah that's tight well i I'm impressed by all the things that are happening in martinsburg right now um and, and can you tell us of anything new that we don't know about that might be happening in martinsburg well, I mean, uh, we we did not receive that raise grant that we put in to, to put the trails together and mm -hmm. to combine uh, the county and get all these trails together, even with the Lake Thomas the Creekside plan. But I know that Andy's been working on some more documentation and, and some more grant opportunities to make that happen. In the meantime, we're going to continue to move forward to tie those trails in. And, um, you know, I, I, I can't speak about the, the, the grant that Andy's working on, but uh, I can speak on the fact that they're working very hard to make that. What's the end goal with the trails to, to start where and end where? So currently the Route 9 trail, as you know, ends by the, the jail. Mm -hmm. And so the goal with that is to tie that trail into the new Frog Hollow Trail, which the city opened about a year, a year ago. And then there's actually plans in engineering to uh, continue that trail from Queen Street all the way to Oatsdale. Oatsdale to the quarry and open up the quarry as a public park. Um, that quarry has been sitting dormant for 100 years with a fence around it. Yeah. So there's a whole plan to make that a public uh, park. And then a trail, the last segment is from um, the quarry to War Memorial Park. So when this is done, there will be a complete trail network literally from Branson, Charlestown, all over to, over to War Memorial Park. And so our grant was about a $20 million grant because it included about $5.5 million of total stream restoration of the Tuscarora Creek. And where, did you, where was that grant from, Andy? It was, uh, it's called a raise grant. It's the major... Uh, the federal dollars? Yes. Okay. So now there's actually another rolling grant through the EPA, which has the same scope. It's a rolling grant application, and the city's uh, going to apply for that i don't think that we you know i don't think that we want to give up on the project we believe in the project it's no. just uh, you know we either get the we either get a big chunk of money do it all at once or we um do it 
you know, incrementally. Going back to the quarries, uh, would you use the water for swimming, for kayaking, for canoeing, or would the water be off limits? So that is a discussion that's been taking place in the first phase. What we would like to do is just um, open up the trail section, but there is discussion in future phase two to open up the possible kayaking, fishing, etc. We do know uh, that uh, there are pictures that go around that people uh, fish in uh, Lake Thomas and there's big fish in there. <laughs> yeah, I hear there's good fish in there. Just hear about that. Yeah. <laughs> the mayor has said that he's heard through the grapevine there's good fish over, <laughs> over there. So, yeah, eventually, you know, to be able to, to touch the water, but, yeah. you know, it's a multi phase project. Yeah, right? and that, that quarry, it, it, there's not a lot of it. Entrance. To That's this exactly right. This right. There is there is one boat entrance there, as as I heard, that there's a boat entrance that you, that you can get onto that. Uh, but a lot of that has to be cleaned up. And you know. so there's a story behind the story that some of us have not heard. No, I, I don't know what you're talking. About. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andy, are there any grants available through the state level, or is it all federal money that you have to go after for this kind of thing? So. The state has transportation alternative grants um, for this type of project. Actually, the city got just was recently awarded a $750,000 TA grant for the Creekside Trail that goes from Queen Street to Oatsdale. Okay. We're very appreciative of it, but it's half of what we asked for. Right. So we just applied for the second half of okay. that. So we do go over state funding. We got a TA grant also as part of this trail. We took over the ownership of the old rail bridge over Apple Harvest. So that bridge will become, uh, will be repainted, some structural work, and actually it will become a trail to connect over to the new uh, mixed-use apartment complex um, over in front of Argos. So you can connect that project to downtown Martinsburg. That project's coming um, up. I think there's a new Wawa going there, apartments, and some uh, townhouse project there on Apple Harvest. Oh, wow. I, I believe there's several hundred that are going to be built there. So the goal was to try to connect them to downtown. Yeah. So is, is on the other side of Apple Harvest, is that still city property there? That's it's the still city. Pr within yeah. city limits? Yes. It was oh, fantastic. Limits. I did not know that. Uh, it, the, uh, and that's one thing. The city's lines are all across yeah. this place. So. Yeah. Is there, any, is there any plans to sort of clean that up and, and connect? I mean, because the, there's li little islands within the city limits really? that are, are with the county still. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. Yeah, well, I mean... You're right. I mean, in my neighborhood, I have eight blocks in the middle of me that's a county right across the street. Right. But it's surrounded by all. But in those times, Andy and I talk about that all the time. And, you know, there's a process to do that. Is that is this the time to do it? Or, you know, we have a lot of things on on our plate right now. Do we, you know, do we want to? Well, and those places sort of get forgotten, too. And you and I have, have driven around yeah. town and, and talked about those areas, especially with the... the uh, paving of streets and, and, and the upkeep of streets that if it's not within the city limits that state. you can't do anything really about it and and the state sort of forgets about it um, so there's a there's a, a lot of uh, I'll say forgetfulness on, on the state's part when it comes to those oh, I would say orphan roads um, so I, you know I'm, I'm not sure what it would take would it take the people on those streets to to want to be uh, annexed, accessed, in. annexed by the city. So there's three ways to annex <laughs> in the in the state. The legislature has changed um, many of the ways to annex. Most annexations happen by voluntary petition of the landowner. I think that any annexation that's happened in the city has been by voluntary annexation. There are other ways to do it by minor boundary adjustment or by election. The easiest way is by voluntary petition. And that would be like a developer saying, hey, I've got this 20 acres. I want to develop it into apartments or townhomes or whatever it is, and I want to be part of the city because I want those services, correct? Correct, but that doesn't really remedy the, uh, the, uh, the islands, islands yeah. Yeah. That, that you gentlemen are talking about. Um, the, may the mayor actually lives close to an island, I think, that you're yeah. talking about. Mm -hmm. That it's not in the city. It's not a city road. It's not a state road. Probably if you go back to the deed a gazillion years ago, it's probably still held by the original landowner. It was never deeded to anybody. Right, gotcha. And nobody wants to, nobody right. can fix it or do but, anything. But what happens, we start, we start fixing roads outside the city, then 
know, where does that end? Yeah. You know, you yeah. start something, where does that end? So we Annexation don't. between the county and the city in a lot of part, a lot of the state has been a very contentious issue. Absolutely. But I don't think it has been in Berkeley County. At least it, it, it used to not to be. If there was a need, the county would go along with the city as far as annexation. Is that still true? Well, if you do an annexation by petition, a voluntary annexation by petition, and frankly, I haven't done one of those in a while, but used to, um, the county really just gives ministerial approval to those. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if it's a minor boundary adjustment, then it's in the discretion of the county as to whether or not the annexation is, is allowed. Has it been pushed back, though, in Berkeley County? I'm not aware. I'm, I'm not, not aware either. Of that. Yeah. So, so talking about all this growth coming with Monument and these uh, new apartments, uh, obviously that's going to increase the population of Martinsburg. What do you see uh, the increase curve looking like? Well, I mean, currently we're the fastest growing uh, city in the state, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it was nine percent was where our growth rate was the last time it was checked, and. And, and I can I, I can see us continuing to stay into that 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 category. But uh, keep in mind too, the city without annexation, the city is the city lines are. Uh, we don't have any more areas to put. This this could be the last big project like that. Yeah. How and, how would you grow? I mean, because you're sort of limited by area. You, you, there's not a whole lot of area to build more housing per se. So how would the city grow? if it weren't through annexation. I mean, obviously the monument project is going to bring in and, and give you a lot of growth uh, because that was an abandoned building for years and years and years. And now you're going to bring a lot of people into that particular facility. So I can see the growth there. But beyond that, how would the city grow? And we're talking about residents too, I'm assuming, right? Well, the city uh, um, does have the entire west side of I-81 in its city limits, which possibility of growth. I think what's going to happen with the Monument Project, the Shenandoah Project, I think it's proven that there's a market for what we would call the missing middle. Not, not for basically the, not high density residential, but the missing middle of, you know, fourplexes, triplexes, um, accessory dwelling units. I think you're going to start seeing more infill. I think you're going to start seeing more residential on top of the downtown uh, the retailers, which is encouraged. I think you're, you know, something that's different about Martinsburg than some other areas of our state where, you know, I'm originally from is the real estate has value here. So when you have some other uh, jurisdictions in the state that aren't growing necessarily, those homes or structures become dilapidated and vacant. In the city of Martinsburg, what you see is you see a turnover because there's actually value here. So you see people buying old stru older structures, renovating, renovating them, and turning them over. Yeah. That's a big advantage to the city of, uh, of Martinsburg. Kevin, the last uh, 60 seconds is yours. Well, you know, I, we went through the election cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's over with, and, you know, it's back to business as usual. And, you know, we have a lot of projects that are on the books that we need to, to continue to, to move forward. And, and we're, we're always looking for thoughts and ideas from the community as to which direction would they like us to see and, and to go uh, in the next direction. You know, we want to focus on the arts. We have we have a councilwoman, Nelson, who is very, very uh, into getting the arts district set up. And we're going to take a look at stuff like that. We have a new councilwoman, uh, Heidi Crawford, that, uh, you know, is going to bring a lot to the table. So I'm, I'm excited excited about you know, the, the next year and four years coming to, to continue to work with the team that we have and the, the ones that we have. It. So. Kevin, Andy, thanks for coming in. Really appreciate it. Um, this set portion of our show brought